Hello, my name is Kelly Cole and I'm a Warramunga Lurija woman from Central Australia. I am the curator at the National Gallery of Australia and curating this body language exhibition, which is here on display at Lismore Regional Gallery. It's been on display since the 28th of August and will be on display until the 8th of November. Body Language is an exhibition about Aboriginal and Torres Strait Island people. We are a diverse people. Uh, it's about our cultural identity. It's about how we create language and how language is embedded in our work, in iconography. It's the way that designs are in rock surfaces, placed on bodies, and then again in, imprinted in um, paintings and sculpture. So I'm also going to talk about these wonderful works by this fabulous artist Emily K. Maware. Emily was born in 1910 and passed away in 1996. Emily started painting later in life but when you are looking at her works, I want you to remember that Emily had been painting since she was a young woman. She would have been painting on the bodies of young un uninitiated ladies. Uh, so when she would have first touched paint, it would have been the natural earth pigments as she rubbed it across either her breast or her body of a young woman. So what you see in Emily's prints are these fine mark making designs. So it's like body paint. Emily Ware had cultural responsibilities to her country. And so those cultural responsibilities were during her singing and her dancing. And during those dances, she would continually have to paint herself up. Just like Emily K. Mamare, Angelina Pearl is also a Majida woman. In her wonderful prints here, we have her figurative works. So when we look at our body paint or our mark making, here we have these wonderful imagery of Angelina's women painted up with the body paint across the chest and also on the breast. Angelina and Emily K. Mamare first started their art practice during batik making. So that mark making practice that transferred from this medium of beautiful silks and cloths to these wonderful prints. They also work in painting as well. Emily K. Maware started um, painting, like I said, early in life, but she went on to be an international known artist and had many extraordinary solo uh, exhibitions. Angelina is still alive today and her painting practice still continues. She still paints her Yelda, her beautiful body painting, but she also paints that beautiful country. So it's also about her cultural experiences and looking after country. And um, that's what the uh, Central Australian women um, really, uh, you know, in the, imprint into their works. Another work that I would love to talk about is Robert Ambrose Cole. Robert Ambrose Cole is a Lurcha and Warramunga man. Uh, so it just so happens these are other print works by Robert Ambrose Cole. Um, Cole was influenced by the Western Desert uh, paintings. Uh, the Western Desert paintings was a series of paintings that were produced in uh, 1971 to 74. It was when a group of men were moved from country, taken to a settlement in Papania in the Northern Territory, and there they would continue doing their cultural practices. They're, again, looking at their uh, designs. So we talk about symbols or iconography. So these men would finely dot their paintings and do concentric circles. And some of those circles would represent water holes. Some of those circles may represent a cave. Here in Robert Ambrose Cole's work, Robert is looking at that fine dotting practices where he's overlaid these beautiful white dots, but he has created the amazing ancestral spirit being within this work. So the, the dots emanate from the center of the print out towards the end, towards the end of the paper.
Here we are looking at Rico Rennie's extraordinary works of message stick and totem pole. Rico Rennie is a Camilleroy man. Um, he grew up in Melbourne and as a juvenile, he spent a lot of time on the streets in Melbourne. He was a graffiti artist. So when you look at his works and this extraordinary totem pole, you see six or eight spray cans layered over the top of each other. This is how Rico would send his message out into his community, how he would talk, how he would express himself as a young Indigenous man. He would go around the streets of Melbourne and tagging uh, walls. Uh, he was really well known for his iconic red kangaroo, which also you know, was uh, six feet tall and had his extraordinary Camilleroy designs. On the 7th of October 2020, Lydia Thorpe, an Aboriginal woman, was sworn into federal government. Lydia walked in to the house wearing a possum skin cloak and she was carrying a message stick. That message stick had markings of 441. That 441 represented the Aboriginal people who have died in custody. In 1991, there was a Royal Commission into deaths in custody, and still today we continue to lose our Aboriginal people in this horrific way. It was a historical moment for Lydia Thorpe and a monumental one. When you were looking at Rico Rennie's works, you were actually looking at his Camilleroy designs. But in his designs, you see at the centre of that work a spray can. And as I said previously, it is a way he carries his message and gets his message across. It is a contemporary practice, the way that Rico uses his Camilleroy designs. But when we look at what Lydia Thorpe did, it was a, a way to pass that message through to government and hear our voice. Here we have this amazing large-scale work by Robert Campbell Jr. Robert Campbell Jr. is a painter and he painted in, uh, again, dotting and fine dotting um, sort of iconography. Here it's a painting about identity and Robert Campbell Jr. has painted his best friend Elfie. Now Elfie was this sporting legend, this hero of Kempsey. So in the centre is this beautiful portrait of a very strong Aboriginal man. Uh, like some of the other works, we have the body paint uh, of the traditional body paint. Here we have a contemporary version of uh, a man, you know, since colonisation living, um, you know, within a small town of New South Wales. Uh, so when you look at this work, you see Elfie, sitting there very resolute, very proud as an Aboriginal man. But when you dissect this painting, the top half, you have got all of these uh, things that Elfie does, like he goes, there's cricket, there's football, there's rugby. But then look at the bottom half of this painting and it's looking at Elfie's um, cultural heritage, who he is as an Aboriginal man. So it's his totems, it's the bush, it's the bush tucker, it's the food he eats. So as Aboriginal people, we live in both worlds. We are still connected to who we are prior to colonisation in the way that we identify and feel about ourselves. But we walk in a, you know, a country uh, that is now, uh, has modern things. And um, sporting is a huge part of Australia culture. Um, and Aboriginal people are just fantastic sporting heroes and sport players. So it's really lovely to see uh, the wonderful Robert Campbell Jr. paint his friend in such a strong way. So here we have a beautiful, uh, very small but very delicate uh, photograph um, of Damien Shen and his uncle Moogie. Damien Shen is an artist who practiced in portraiture, 
but he's also moved on to other mediums. Uh, the actual photographer of this work is Richard Lyons, um, and Damien Chen asked his friend Richard to take some photos of him and Uncle Moogie as they are getting dressed up for the very first time, painted up in um, traditional Narendiri body paint. Uh, Damien Chen uh, has uh, Chinese heritage, so he's very proud of his identity. He's a Narendiri man with Chinese heritage. His mother was an amazing photographer as well. But in this beautiful little photograph, you see Damien and Uncle Moggy standing together, very strong, very powerful. So those mark making of that uh, body paint um, is just so powerful in this very small image. This is a really fun work to work with kids. Um, we're looking at these are wonderful bush toys by uh, David Wallace. David Wallace is an Aranda man. Um, he was born in Santa Teresa, just outside of Alice Springs, but he's moved to Titicala, which is another small community. David Wallace creates these uh, whimsical, fun little objects. Um, David plays with wire, plays with copper, um, finds objects, found materials, and creates these little works. Uh, there is a serious note to David's works. Uh, David is, of course, an Aboriginal man born in Central Australia, who uh, his country, he's been moved off his country. Um, if we look at these, the cattle industry and the 19, um, 66 Gurindji walk-off when Aboriginal people were removed off country but then also brought onto stations to work as stockmen and cattle people. Uh, so the Gurindji Wave Hill walk-off was a very important moment for um, Indigenous people. Uh, it's an important part of our history. Um, David Wallace continues to work uh, in this practice of, of these beautiful little bush toys. So we have two lots of Indigenous people here in Australia. So we have the Aboriginal people of mainland Australia and then we have also Torres Strait Island people. So Torres Strait Island people uh, live within the 150 archipelago islands or far north Queensland. Um, they are uh, a group of you know, seafaring people. Um, they're their spirits and myths and stories are quite different to the mainland Aboriginal um, people. Uh, so within this exhibition, we have the wonderful works by Alec Tapodi. Uh, it's a lino cut print. So Alec, as a child, grew up with carving. The carving tradition is such a huge part of Torres Strait Island culture. And when he went to uh, do a printmaking course, they, he found that the, the, the printing in lino cut was very similar to the practice of uh, sculpting. Uh, so when you actually dig into a lino cut, you're incising into a lino cut, it's the same practice as you would do within sculpture. So in um, Alec Tapodi's print, he has a strong warrior, so this very strong Torres Strait Island man with a beautiful pearl uh, necklace around his neck. And again, the iconography of the Torres Strait Islands is very different. So when you look at this print, it's uh, engraved in a way that it's like remnants of pearl shells. In this exhibition is also uh, Jimmy Thide's work, and they're just a little sculpture work in ceramics. And again, it's a little, Appy, so the little uh, sculpture of uh, a Torres Strait Island uh, little man, and uh, it is adorned with uh, the feathers of birds, so the birds of paradise that uh, live within these islands. I talk a lot about iconography and designs uh, within the works in this exhibition. Um, 
as we talk about body language and language of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Island people, our language is embedded in our works. Um, we've got these two wonderful shields here on display in body language, and one of them is a rainforest shield from uh, far north Queensland. Um, it is painted in beautiful ochre. That rainforest shield is removed from a root of a tree, uh, a corkwood tree, and it is just so gentle and so light, but so large scale. When these works were created and made, um, it's a 19th century work. We have these two 19th century shields, the beautiful rainforest shield and a broad shield. These works were collected and when they were collected, they were called either unknown artist or unknown maker. What you would see within these works is we've now changed those names to ancestors. They were once our warriors and once our men. They had a living and breathing. Uh, so to give them that respect back, and uh, we have changed that name to ancestor. So on that broad shield, you would see the same similar iconography as you do within Rico Rennie's work. Uh, it's a Rogery shield, so close border connections with a Camilleroy, but you still see these same designs. This next body of work is called Way of the Nunkara and it was created by Warwick Thornton. Warwick Thornton is a Cadage man who was also uh, brought up in Alice Springs. Uh, he comes from a long line of filmmakers. Warwick himself is a filmmaker, a cinematographer, and has created extraordinary movies. In this series of work, The Way of the Nunkara, Warwick talks about the fact that when he was uh, a small child of only 12 or 13 in 1969, he went to see Star Wars. And Star Wars is something that, you know, uh, generations have grown up with. And the Jedi have these powers. So what Warwick is looking at is how, as a child, he went home and sort of thought about the fact that if, as Aboriginal people, we also have powers. There are certain people who are born in um, healing powers, and we call them Nunkras. And so Way of the Nunkara is really reflecting on how we as Aboriginal people had the power uh, and the spirit to, uh, to heal um, and to help people. Uh, in this work, of the three different screens, you see a woman with a digging stick. In the center, you have Warwick Thornton levitating across on top of the fire. And the third one is a male figure with the number seven boomerang. Um, and it's just showing how powerful uh, we are as Indigenous people and he's just wanting to play with that sort of uh, iconography.